Ah, hang on. See, it would have helped if I had been set up for this. Yeah, I've been really busy doing Death Moon. And um, also, there, you know, a lot of people are going, Dr. Freedom, how come you ain't making more videos? Because there was nothing really to report. Because um, ever since they started filming the Christmas special, other than like maybe one or two days, they've been ushering Capaldi off the set into a car and taking him off. The only person I think who's been coming out has been Matt Lucas. You know, Nardal. Um, now, a lot of people are like, why do you pick on Nardal? I said, because it's yet another case of, you know, like I said, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, we've seen Nardal already in action. And is it going to be worth wasting, like, God knows, you know, the Christmas special and how many episodes on this one side character? You know. I leave it up to you to judge, and that's it. We'll find out come, you know, December where this is going. But, <clears throat> but yeah, it's been really, really quiet on the filming front because there's been really no pictures coming out other than selfies. Matter of fact, I am beginning to agree with a couple of people. It has gotten to the point it's not even set reports anymore. It's just mainly folks getting selfies with the actors. But, you know, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying more power to them, you know, good luck. You know, I, if I was there, I'd probably be doing the same thing. But the thing is, it's like no real news is coming out. Matter of fact, they even have the one area completely blacked out to the point there's no way anyone can even get a telephoto lens in there to see what's going on. You know, they're being really, really careful with this year's Christmas special so far. So we got to sit back and wait and see, you know, what cookie crumbles. But let's get to what I was going to talk about really quick here because I normally don't shoot videos at night anymore because it just got to be too much of a hassle. It kept, keeps me up half the night, but. Okay, let's go right into it, shall we? Now, the big deal this week was Eccleston wishes he'd stayed on to Doctor Who for a little longer. And this has been drifting around across multiple articles, across multiple sites. But basically, in this interview, um, he was getting he was speaking on Melbourne's 774, the you know, ABC, which is Australian Broadcasting. And matter of fact, if you want to listen to it right here, there's eight and a half minutes of it. Boom, boom, there it is. And this is what he said, that he didn't feel that he had creative control of the character. He said, quote, it was kind of tragic for me that I didn't play him for longer. He's a beautiful character, and I have a great deal of professional pride. And had I done a second season, there would have been a marked improvement in my performance. I was learning new skills in terms of playing light comedy. I was not known for light comedy, and again, production did not allow for that. And then he goes, if Eggleston stayed in the TARDIS, he would have seen more light comedy. And you know, then he said, quote, I'd had enough. I wanted to do it my way. They wanted something else. We were never going to compromise, so it was best to be straight about it and just go. Now, he said, although keeping distance from the show, he said, quote, unquote, he's always there in spirit. Now, the thing is, he's allegedly already said no to Big Finish, which to me is sad because Big Finish is a different arena than the BBC. It's, it's not the BBC. It's a whole other ballpark, and I really wish he'd give them a chance. I really wish he would because I think it'd be amazing to have the ninth doctor back even on audio. And I don't know. It's just something has left such a bad taste in his mouth that, you know, he doesn't really go near Dr. Who, especially since the whole day of the doctor debacle, AKA era of the Zygons, as we call it here. All right. Now, once again, here's Barrelman. Hint says, who may yet be the reason why Torchwood has yet to return. All right. How many times I got to say this? Torchwood is likely never going to come back. And the reason being is because Miracle Day killed it and killed it dead. And a lot of people have been jumping up and down again lately, pulling the quote unquote Americanized card. The only person responsible for the death of Torchwood is Russell T. Freaking Davies. He dropped the ball. He burned out. He burned out hard. He crashed and burned. He did a full-on goose hitting his head on the canopy, breaking his neck and smacking into the ocean. You know, Top Gun reference for you Americanized folks out there. It was all really bad writing. It was, if you go back and watch it, and I have at least once, and it took me every bit of willpower just to go back and watch it once. Because it's that bad. It really is. You don't make a pedo your hair, your hero, you know, your hero, or try to give a pedo some kind of redemption. That's never going to work on any book on this planet. Not to mention all the unnecessary sex scenes, which ate up huge you know, minutes in segments where you could have been furthering the plot. But then you know, it seemed like it was padding because if you keep going back and watching it, which I have at least once, 
it seemed to me like they took a five episode script and tried to stretch it out into a 10 episode serial and it was never going to work. Miracle Day killed Torchwood and it killed Torchwood dead. I'm not kidding. I'm talking, it, yeah, it not only killed Torchwood, it buried Torchwood in a concrete bunker and then dumped it somewhere like on Saturn and then aliens showed up later and whizzed on the, on the remains. I'm not kidding. It's, it's that far gone. I, I, it's great that it's come back on audio. But as far as coming back to video, I do not know. Now, I don't want to slam on Torchwood too hard because, as I said, it has come back on audio. Matter of fact, they got the Torchwood archive coming up um, on Big Finish. And if you go back and listen to the Big Finish Torchwoods, they are awesome. They even have one where they go back in time. They bring back Susie for an adventure. They also had where they brought back Yvonne Hartman for an adventure, played by, you know, Tracy Ann Oberman. And, of course, Indira Varma is, you know, what do you call it? As a, what's her name? Susie. They keep killing Susie. So Susie's been back. And then you know, Yvonne Hartman's been back. Um, they've got an adventure coming up where it's Yvonne Hartman and Yanto back at Canary Wharf. Uh, they got Torchwood Archive coming. They've got uh, the lives of Captain Jack Hartness coming up, which is going to be all pretty much Barum and going through different aspects of you know, John, you know, sorry, Jack Hartness's life. So it's great on audio. But like I said, the chances of getting back on video are pretty slim. If you want to read his quotes on it, there it is. Sorry I went on a little bit, but that's how strong I feel about it. Okay, if you're into Lethbridge Stewart, you get a free download, Last Duty, while you call up. They've announced the free special digital release of The Last Duty, a tribute to the real-life WAF Eileen Young husband who features in the book. Also, here's some other stuff here. Also, it's set shortly after the grandfather infestation. So if you've been keeping up on this, here you go. Meanwhile, the cover for The Havoc Files 2 has been revealed. Which plus an and a, that and a sorry plus news and an additional tale will be included in the anthology. Um, so if you want to know more about the Lethbridge you know, book series by Candy Jar Books, all right here here it is. All you need to know. Bam, bada, bam, bada, he, bam, boom. There it is. Moving on. Third Doctor comic arrives next week. That's right, next Wednesday, September fourteenth. Titan Comics released the first issue of their brand new Doctor Who series, which will focus on the new adventures featuring the Third Doctor, as played by John Pertwee. Now, what's fantastic is it's amazing how well the Pertwee era has been revived into, you know, fandom, especially, you know, through the Third Doctor audio, Third Doctor Adventures via Big Finish. Um, and that's, you know, played by Tim Trelore, who, by the way, we've, uh, he, I've not only done an interview with, but we also did a spectacular Q&A with. Um, a really nice guy, like I said, and he does a really good, you know, really good acting. He does a really good, you know, I don't want to say impersonation. He does his own performance of the third doctor. You know, he does reflect a lot on Pertwee because he uses Pertwee as his inspiration. So it's like there are parts during those audios where I actually go, oh, my God, that sounds just like John Pertwee. Matter of fact, that's how I got the role. And that's a whole story you'll find out if you listen to the interviews. But um, once again, check out the covers. Really beautiful stuff. And it's nice to see that, you know, Per tweets, you know, the third doctor has getting getting a resurrection via comics as well as audio. Lives of Captain Jack, as we all brought up before, um, they have announced further adventures, and this will be starting in June of 2017. So, this is next year. Here's a little bit of details about what we do know about it. Russell Toby going to be popping in at Camille Coderie. For you folks who don't remember, that's Alonzo from the Voyage of the Dumbed, and Camille Coderie, of course, who played Rose Tyler's mom, Jackie. Um, so lots of interesting stuff. Hell, Sarah Douglas, fantastic, fantastic actress, Katie Manning, of course. So different times, different plans. So it's you know, with Katie Manning included, it'd be kind of nice to find out that Captain Jack did a little adventure with Joe Grant. Okay. So here's a little more intel, a little more intel on it. If you want to go check it out. Also comics out this week coming this Wednesday, two days from now. Well, less than two days from now, probably. By the time this goes up, it is going to be uh, 10th Doctor 2.14 and Supremacy, Supremacy of the Sire Man 3. If you want to preview these, once again, just go to here and you can bring up the covers. You know, there you just click on it and pop up for you. Wham, bam, there you go. And that's all I had for today. Like I said, I just wanted to get this out because I was going to do this earlier and I completely forgot. I've been so busy, you know, writing on, you know, when I'm not falling asleep at the desk, I've been writing on um, Death Moon. Part two should be out shortly. Um, 
like I said, this one's going to be a multi-person cast. So right now I'm gathering up everybody's parts. You know, as I write them, I send them out their lines. They record them. They send them back to me, and then I mix them together here. So that's why it's going to take a little longer this time around because people are busy. People have things to do. People have lives. And like I said, unlike me, who can just you know, sit down and hammer out an entire adventure by myself, you know, because <laughs> I'm doing all the voice you know, on Skydark. I did all the voices and such. So, ah, uh, well, until next time, everybody, take care. Ta ta. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out of here. Have a good one.